مرحبا بكم في قهوة بنادم وحلقة جديدة من بودكاستكم المفضل جمع معنا حلقة اليوم حلقة سبيسيال بزاف لعدة أسباب منها مليحة ومنها ماشي مليحة نبدأ أولا بالحوايج الملاح اللي هما واحد الحلقة راهي بالإنجليزية واثنين زبون اليوم ما يهدرش عربية ولا تزيرية ما راهوش جزائري ديجا وراح يقدر يمدنا بيرسبكتيف اللي ما عدناش ولا ممكن ما لاحظناش نروحوا الحوايج اللي يوجعوا القلب الأخبار السيئة هي حلقة اليوم موضوعها حساس وراح تحكي على العنصرية ضد ال... العنصرية في الجزائر ضد ليزيتخونجي والناس ذوي البشرة السوداء ومنه نتمنى أنه أي كومنتار ولا أي ملاحظة ولا أي فكرة زايدة تكون مكتوبة باحترام في القصرة اللي درناها كان زوج ولايات جبدناهم بزاف وين هدرة هذيك قادرة تدير بين قوسين فتنة من صح لازم تفكروا بلي كل واحد عنده آراء وكل واحد عنده حرية التعبير باحترام القصرة كان طويلة وين ضيف حكان على تجربته في الجزائر للأسف كانت ماشي مليحة كتر من مليحة راني حطيت الترجمة في الفيديو على اليوتيوب يعني إذا ما تفهمش ولا ما تفهميش الإنجليزية ما تسمعوش البودكاست في سبوتيفاي من الأحسن تشوفوه في اليوتيوب بلا ما نطول عليكم نخليكم مع القصرة جيب قهوة وجمع معنا مرحبا بك في قهوة بنادم Hey man, how is it going? Yeah, it's it's going good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's going good. It's how going all right. You? It's going all right. Thank you for being here and sharing your opinion and sharing your perspective on this topic. And I also think that you are able to maybe educate some people not knowing very well about this topic. I already said in the introduction that the today's topic is an important one. And it's about racism against foreigners and people of black skin in Algeria. It's a very sensitive topic, and I am sure a lot will say there is no such thing or uh, something like that. But you're here to share your experience and thoughts in order to spread awareness and, yeah, in order to spread awareness of peop- what people are not aware of. All right. All right. So, um, I don't know how to start this topic. There's like uh, no good segue or no good introduction like about <laughs> racism. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe like let's start. Let's start from something like at least a little bit positive. So, how many years have you spent in Algeria or lived in Algeria? Um, so I spent four years in Algeria. Mm-hmm. I, I arrived in Algeria after finishing my uh, my high school. Mm-hmm. So that was uh, 2015. 2015 till 2019. So yeah, I spent four years in total in Algeria and I had the chance to go to visit a lot of wilayas from Algeria. That's so I can say uh, I really visited uh, Algeria. Like I got to see people from different places. Yeah, That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I feel like um, Algeria is one of those countries who are not famous uh, internationally, not not just in the African continent. But uh, if you say that, for example, at least me, if I say that I'm from Algeria to someone who is a foreigner, they have like trouble knowing what is Algeria, where is it in the map, or uh, what kind of culture or what kind of tradition and religion in Algeria is. So when you when you like planned and realized okay after this i'm going to live in algeria i'm going to study there did you have any kind of um expectations um for, for you to understand my expectations it's I, I think i need to give you a little bit of uh background story of how our education system works in rwanda mm-hmm. so the, the after finishing high school Th- those who are elites of the countries, they get scholarship to go study abroad. Mm-hmm. So you you get for, you get to, get to go in the US, you get to go in Canada, you get to go in a lot of countries. Uh, so uh, as when I was at, uh, I, I remember I was eighteen. My dream was always to leave the country, because mm-hmm. you know 
they sell you that dream of going abroad. You see people who goes abroad in Europe, they come back, they look rich, they're, they're driving cars. So uh, as, as someone who's young, mm-hmm. it, it was like a dream to f- finish high school uh, excellent and then, then go abroad. So I remember when I finished, there were a lot of scholarships. There were we, Japan and every way. I remember I applied for Japan, Turkey, and then I saw Algerian scholarships. Mm-hmm. But then I had I had my brother, my older brother, who he was in Morocco, and he loved it. So and his friend was in Algeria. I took to him, told me Algeria is great. It's a great place to go. Uh, if he, everything's free for students, because you know, since my family couldn't afford. Uh, paying for me to go abroad so like okay uh, Algeria is a place for students it's, it's cheap it's fun yeah I was so excited mm-hmm. yeah I, I was really excited and uh, when I got there it was like nothing I, I prepared myself to face especially for someone who was 18 years old mm-hmm. it, it was I, I could say it was a shock but yeah I learned I learned from that well, yeah, 18 years old is pretty young to have mm, such a drastic change from your lifestyle or from just li- going ab- going on your own to live abroad at, at the age of 18 is pretty brave and pretty pretty difficult. Yeah, I, it is. It is especially uh, since the culture is totally different. Mm-hmm. The people are totally different. The language. I, I couldn't speak French. I just know how to say bonjour, comment ça va. Only that, but I couldn't speak French. So it, it, was, it was difficult. Yeah. But then, yeah, the, the difficulty was more of uh, how, how to integrate in the society. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, let's let's go back to what you were saying about how you, you were planning to go study abroad and you were seeing all your options but uh, you were seeing Algeria as one of the options and I can I can probably speak for a lot of Algerians it's the same thing where for us where we are sold the dream of going to study abroad or to live abroad and make money and you know get those fast cars and those good cars and whatever so a lot of people think that the Algerian education or the Algerian system is not is not good enough or is not that or uh, actually it's not good at all so what do you think like um sold you in the idea of studying in algeria is it just living abroad or studying abroad or or did you see it as maybe like a stepping stone to get somewhere else um for me uh by that time it was just the idea of studying abroad especially algeria is a country as you said you you don't hear a lot about Algeria. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it's it's like I say, it's a close country in a sense. There there are no people who visit Algeria. For instance, all, all the um, foreign people who are living in Algeria, most of them either diplomats or student. Mm-hmm. It's rare to find tourists going to Algeria. So you you really don't don't hear a lot about Algeria. So I, I that's why I asked my friend who was there like how's algeria but he, did, he didn't tell me all the truth he just told me the positive side of the country yeah and i was old mm-hmm. but it wasn't really what i expected yeah especially since even school the level was not what i expected and everything yeah like i didn't really have the real information about the country yeah um obviously a lot of countries that t- tend to uh, make their image look more shinier and they're doing great things and whatnot but in reality it's like things are not go- going very well and yeah but let's let's talk about still let's still like keep talking about education there is like something that that surprised me uh you said you're from rwanda and in your education, when you study, uh, for example, the topics of uh, geography or like uh, social studies, you are introduced in your curriculum about the Africa, African continent. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, uh, that's correct. Yeah. And um, how like in depth do you go 
or do you study the African continent, whether it's like politically or uh, geographically? Um, so it depends on the specialties. For me, I did a science speciality. Mm -hmm. That was math, physics, chemistry, and the entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't have geography uh, uh, courses, so, which means in my high school, well, the, our system is a little bit different. We don't do all the courses. We just do all the courses three, three years, mm -hmm. and then you specialize for the last three years of high school. Mm -hmm. So the first three years of high school, we, we really don't study much of African geography. But yeah, you know all the countries, you, you need to know the capitals. We study the, some of the empires, empire of Mali, empire of uh, Songana, Songai, Egypt. Mm -hmm. But the, that's history. Mm -hmm. But then you, 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 you don't study like the political situation of the countries since it's, it's 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 a little bit advanced. Yeah. Only people who who majors in in uh, history, geography, but those are the people who get a chance to to study the country. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, since I did science major, I didn't really go into depth. Mm -hmm. I, I was a science science major also in high school, but we had this uh, geography and history and kind of social studies to some extent, and they were not as deep or they were just surface level, but most of them were concerned in EU countries and the Europe continent and Asia and America and Russia, like the war between them, the world war. And I remember that during the whole time I was thinking that why are we studying about all this uh, other continents if we are in, in Africa? And during my whole curriculum, I have no idea about, for example, the Nigerian geography or the Ni Nigerian culture or uh, what's happening in Rwanda or South Africa or all of these countries that, you know, you just hear of when, for example, you watch a football game or you watch something related to Africa, but you don't actually have no. an idea or it's in your continent, but you don't have any specific understanding of where they are or what do they do or how are they doing economically or what's the political situation and in my opinion i think that's that's a little bit messed up that uh being now the biggest country in the continent but you don't focus your curriculum about the continent and you study more about what is going outside don't you think so yeah yeah that, that that's true that, that that's true uh, yeah, I, 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 I realized that Algerians, they really know nothing about Africa as a continent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's, it's the politics, it's the system. For instance, even, even for, for us, even though I didn't, we didn't study all the geography of Africa, but then when you're watching news on television, their programs, they, they, they talk about Africa, they talk about what Af other African uh, countries are doing. And I think that, that helps even for someone who hasn't been to school. He, can, he, he knows that there is a country called Algeria, that something like this happened, for instance. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's more of a po political um, thing like in a country. Yeah, yeah, of course. But... Uh... I think it's also that it's the truth that Algerians don't kind of uh, link themselves to Africa and at the same time don't link themselves to Europe or any other continent. It's it's as if they are their own thing, like in the middle. But they, I feel like they get more offended or angry if you relate Algeria to Africa. And which yeah. is going to lead yeah. us to the topic of uh, why... Algeria was such a shock to you because I remember we were talking like five years ago or something where you mentioned that uh, like why do why do they call like uh, for example the, talk to the African guy or you had classes where it's gonna be for the African guys and you were singled out as the African guys and it was that was pretty unacceptable, to be honest. That was pretty messed up. And 
you would expect better from like a university or an institution or something that is representing the Algerian education and it shouldn't be okay. So could you share more about how how was that a shock to you or how was that a pretty bad experience? Um, yeah, I, it, it, it was a pretty bad experience, especially when you get to class and you see the teacher, someone who's educated, he's a doctor and he's referring to us, you Africans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for me, it was like, okay, well, maybe I don't understand French or something, but yeah, the, 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 this doesn't seem normal. Mm. But but the, the whole Algerian experience, I mean, the first day, the first day you came to Algeria at the airport, the our friends came to pick us. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were at Alger, and then the the first night I remember the first night we were walking on the road, and the car part, a guy screamed some word I, I didn't understand, but at that time what he meant, and one of my friends was really upset. I was like, "Why are you upset? What did he say?" He said he he called us monkeys. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a shock mm -hmm. because that, that it's, it's my first day in the country, and uh, it yeah, the first day you get in the country and you get called the monkey. It's like the first red like, flag. Okay. Yeah, it was, I was like the first red flag, but I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, he, he's an asshole. You know, every country ha, ha, has one of those. So mm -hmm. they, they, let's see. But then I remember, remember when, when I got to my city where I was supposed to do my study Jaffa. Yeah, it, it was it was even tough because I, I got there during summer. The studies has not yet be, uh, begun. Mm -hmm. So there were some other friends or friends from Congo who were in um, hostels. So they, they came to pick us, um, came to pick us. So when you find someone there, he's going to tell you this how things go, this how things go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 the, for them the first thing was like, okay, here's the thing. So you are going to be insulted every way, every day. If you go to school and you come back home, someone did insult you. That's going to be um, like a miracle. Mm. So first thing, you're going to be insulted. Get used to it. People are not going to respect you, and uh, make sure you don't fight, because if you fight, they can even kill you, and uh, no one, no one is going to save you. Yeah, so that 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 was that was the 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 show that that was shocking because like okay this is really not what I expected at all and uh, yeah so eighteen years old and you find yourself in that situation you know but you adapt yeah obviously and it's like um, you're not sure how to react. And you just basically got your freedom and now you have to be in this situation where you have to accept being insulted every day and you, if you fight, you yeah. might put yourself in danger and it's like it's like a pretty stressful situation and it gives you a lot of uh, anxiety and it gives you a lot of unsureness and a lot of bad feelings. Yeah, and, and uh, it, it really messes you up. Like, um, trust in yourself, mm. you know, because uh, the, the it's, it's like people keep reminding you you are worthless. Mm. You know, people keep in that. I, I remember, like in in class, uh, I was smart in class. I could people would come to me. I I help them study, you know, explain some stuff. Mm. And then when you go out, I hear them insulting me. I was like, okay, like, this is. And that, that was the experience for every um, foreign student mm. from Africa. Yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying is that when they, when they want to, when they want something from you or need your help, they're super friendly. But as soon as they are in the public or with with next to other people, they change. Yeah, they change. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. I, I, I don't know if, if you remember, like w when we met, I was like, yeah, the, it's, it, 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 it was like a miracle for meeting someone. The, there were really some people who are decent, you know, who are honest, who, you know, who, who don't look for, um, um, like, like, oh, I forgot the word, like, uh, 
p- people with um, honest intentions, you know, you are not looking for any, anything from me. You just want to get to know me, you know, to help me integrate the society. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that, th- that, that was relieving, you know. Mm. I think to, I think I also noticed that you there being in Algeria, like a complete foreigner, you don't speak the language and whatnot. I think I realized that it's not the so easy and uh, you're not having like the best quality of life. You're just, I think I, I realized that you're, you realized like I'm stuck here for the next three years and a half or something. And you, you were also interested. We had a lot of things in common and obviously we became friends and whatnot. But um, I remember you telling me something. We were in a, in a group or whatever, and you joined us a lot. And one day I remember you getting angry and leaving, even though I kind of felt that I was being a good friend, uh, like inviting you to hang with us and whatnot and whatnot. I didn't think of, of it a lot, but fast forward like four years in the f- future, five years in the future, and uh, I was thinking, I was abroad and I was uh, in, f- in, a bu- in a group of people, like the same situation and they started speaking a language that i didn't understand and i realized like it's making me angry because i couldn't be part of the conversation i couldn't add and i couldn't just leave because i was stuck in that position and it would be very rude to leave and the only thing i started feeling was just anger and anger and and that reminded me of that of you when you uh kind of showed anger because you could not be part of our conversation because we were speaking Algerian and because you felt like you wanted to leave, but it would also be like kind of not nice for you to leave. And yeah. it made sense for me. Yeah. The, yeah. I, I remember that time, but m- most of the times when something like that happened, it's not really just that it's, it's like a chain of things, you know? Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, like uh, from a resurfacing, I can say, since, mm. you know, you, you live in a place, you have zero freedom and uh, you have no one to talk about it because everyone is living the same, the same situation. Yeah, mm. you know, I like, f- for me, I couldn't tell my home, like, this the situation. And I was like, okay, I need to man up. I need to yeah. go through this and then after I go back home. Yeah, so, so w- when th- that happened... It, it, it was just it was like a, a reminder that that yeah the, the, this is not your home it's not you are not mm. welcome to, to 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 this country you you know that, that that's how it felt mm. because I, I I always asked myself um, with all my friends I, I spent I spent four years in in Algeria like how I, I was invited to an Algerian friend's house not more than three times mm. yeah so i was like okay i mean yeah th- this is sad you know you, you go yeah, to it a really is yeah, yeah you, you're not welcome yeah it's 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 not something that should should be allowed since the algerian government is accepting foreign students but it's forcing them to live on this barely livable standards and barely livable situation like the housing situation everyone knows how is the housing in universities in algeria and uh i'm not actually sure the money you get as if you're a foreign student or whatever you got from your scholarship but even that it was bad the quality of education was to some extent uh, passable not the best but not the worst and yeah. just just good, just average. And yeah, um, as a foreigner, you are you are limited by you can't go outside a lot because it will only provoke problems. It will only like get you into troubles. And yeah. actually, I I wanna I wanna go to like another question or like another topic, which is you said you visited many wilayas in Algeria. What would you say is your favorite, and why? Um, 
I would say uh, Tizi Ozu. Mm -hmm. Tizi Ozu was my favorite Wilaya because I felt that I had a little bit of uh, freedom. Mm. In Tizi Ozu, uh, I was not afraid to go out the night. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I could go out when, the night, even even Algiers, yeah. If you, when you studied in Jelfa, I think that Jelfa is one of the wilayas in Algeria that they are pretty, I, I can't find the right word in English, but uh, it's basically translate to right wing. They are very yeah, conservative. Rightist, conservative. They're extremely conservative. It can be a good thing, but it can also be a really, really bad thing to be very conservative. And uh, even me, because I was not from Jelfa and I've been there many times and I did not feel fully welcome. And obviously, I'm not, I did not get the bad treatment that you got, like to any extent. Like it was not. <laughs> It was not yeah. anything that is violent or anything, but to some extent, I felt that I was not also welcome there, or not welcome, but not my place. Mm. I was I didn't feel like it was my place. But when you compare it to other wilayas like uh, Alger or Bian or Tizi Wuzu, it's uh, it's much much different, especially Tizi Wuzu because it's such a such a drastic change, uh, whether the language, whether the culture and the tradition, and they can be conservative, but they are not to the to the extent of the other wilaya Jilfa. Yeah, the, that's true. Yeah, and when it comes to, I think Rwanda is mainly Christians, right? When it comes to religion, yeah. For us, it's yeah. There's religion in Muslims. But then mm -hmm. I, I always t tell this story um, because f for us it's, it's different. You know, mm -hmm. uh, back home where I grew up, I was born in a Muslim uh, neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of Muslims, but yeah, it, it's, it's mixed. There are Muslims, Christians, and everywhere. So uh, m most of my friends were Muslims. And uh, f for me, Islam... Uh, from, for me, I, I, before I left home, like people who were cool, you know, as a kid, mm -hmm. people who were cool, uh, artists, musicians, football players, most of them used to convert to, to Islam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, Islam was a religion of cool people. Mm -hmm. But then when I got to Algeria, it, it, was, it, it was something else. <laughs> mm. I, well, I, I now I understand, but the first time I got to Jelfa, uh, a girl c came to talk to me. I tried to shake her hand; she, she mm. refused. For me, that that was a shock. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you know that, that was a shock. Yeah, like you can't talk to a girl. Oh, uh, well, when you're talking to a girl and her cousin passed by, she hides. Yeah. F for me, that 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 was that was uh, crazy. Like we're just talking, and I'm not trying to go out with you just talking i'm trying to get to know yeah, you this is why what and, i meant by in jelfa the, they're conservative but to the point where it might be just counterproductive or just really bad yeah and and it it, it was also um when you talk to someone the first question they ask you is muslim or non-muslim mm. before they even ask your name most of the people and I, I used to see that with my classmates uh, when I told them I'm not Muslims. Like when they see me listening to music, they start telling me music is haram, mm. but they're listening to music at the same time. Mm. I'm like, okay, okay, it's haram, but then I'm not Muslim. Plus, you listen to the same music. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, where but is your logic? Just, yeah. <laughs> where is the logic? Yeah. So, so it, it, it was like, if you're not Muslim, everything you do, it's, yeah. Yeah, it, it's haram. Yeah, it, no, that, 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 like the double standards. Yeah, I think you might have enjoyed Tizi Uzo because the version of Islam there is pretty less uptight than Jelfa, and and uh, they don't have that like conservative mindset, or they are a little bit more liberal, and it might have 
felt more like what is what are you familiar with but uh i also wanted to ask you since you are like a christian and whatnot when you came to algeria you expected that you you sorry i'm gonna rephrase that since you grew up christian and you came to algeria which is a only muslim country you knew that you're going to live by the muslim standards and you you knew that you are going to have to ad- to respect the the society and the rules that society implies and whatever you're going to do that goes against it you have to do it on your own did you like um expect that or did you did it came to you as a shock uh so for, for me it, it was oh yeah you know when you live in the country the parents they tell you okay you're going to a new place first thing you need to do you need to respect mm. where you're going mm. but but then uh, you, you 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 don't you don't you don't understand like um the, um, the you don't really understand the situation since you're not in the situation mm. But f- for me, I was like, "Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, go- I'm, I'm going to respect them, but then I will not feel judged for not being a Muslim." Yeah, and yeah. To be honest, you shouldn't, because uh, if someone is a Muslim, they should understand that everyone has the right to choose their religion, and you can't force anything about anyone. But it comes to the same thing where you said that people would kind of bully you about listening to music but at the same time they're still listening to it and it's this like yeah. weird double standard yeah, yeah. there the, the, that, that double standard but about what, what the problem is for the the, the real, for example the reason why i like i like kisuzu it was not like that more rebel it it's i i didn't really feel like a foreigner mm. You know, because we in Jelfa, everywhere you go, people are looking at you, kids, mm. people your age, grown ups. They are whistling. They are calling you. They are calling you names. Everywhere mm. you go, it's yeah. You 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 really feel like yeah, you don't belong here. But Tizuzu is I can say they are more used to foreigners. Yeah, they yeah, people they, they don't mind your business as long as you don't harm anyone. Yeah. It's okay. You, yeah. I like, think no one even sees you. I think that there's still like some people who would like, uh, even if they don't like talk to you, they would still give you the looks or like, what are you doing here? Who are you? And what? But yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. But, but not at the same extent. Yeah. I, I think that in general, the coastal cities or the coastal wilayas are more attractive to foreigners because, uh, there is more internationality there not like there's no it's not about tourism or about uh, how many foreigners live there but i think that there is a lot of algerians who are used to going abroad and coming back and they have a better idea of how the world works so they get to accept yeah. foreigners more and better yeah 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 okay, yeah i think that that's it yeah because in my opinion when you compare cities like uh Wahran or Alger or Tiziwuzu, it's they have this a lot of like this uh, things in common that are that include accepting foreigners. For me, actually, it was one of my questions that I wanted to ask you. Do you think that if you had your studies in Alger or uh, something like uh, Blida or uh, Wahran or Annaba, do you think that it would have been like a better experience or less bad experience? Yeah, I think it would have been a better experience, but still, uh, all, all my friends who were in those big cities, they all had that that trauma. Mm. You know, they yeah, because the, most of them, when you talked about them, you had the stories of people who are dressed on daylight, bright mm. light, and no one's helping, and yeah, they, they, they were still that trauma. But yeah, yeah, I, I think to have, it would have been a, a much better experience. Mm. Yeah. I, for for instance, like I remember, in I was in Jelfa, I was going to LJ and uh, I want to take the bus. Mm-hmm. So I went to take the bus, and there were there there was a kid. He had like seventeen. He said, "No, I'm not taking monkeys in my my dad's company." 
Mm. So I went to I went out to take a um, taxi collective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they told me the same thing. They say well, today we're not t- taking monkeys. I was like, wow. Yeah, or, or be, this is that. Or they know? like charge you more than necessary because you are not familiar with the pricing or something like that. Yeah, they they, they used to charging more. Yeah, it's like, I say it's business by you know mm-hmm. refusing to 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 take you because you're black. Yeah, that's, I mean the, that's crazy. Yeah, that that was crazy. Yeah, I I think that, that was crazy. Yeah, I think what a lot of Algerians don't understand is that once you leave the African continent, let's say you go to to the Arab Gulf, like you go to Saudi Arabia or Emirates, or you go to to uh, America, whatever you you feel like going, it stops like being about black and not black. It's it becomes as if Oh, you're from Africa. You're like slightly darker skin, and like you are all in one cat- category. You are all like not welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <That's>, you know. <laughs> it's not about being uh, black yeah. or not black or slightly brown. If you're not white, you're not welcome at all. And I wanted to ask you more about since you're not living in Algeria now, you're living abroad. How would you compare the racism or what kind of racism or hostility did you find from where you live in now and from algeria um i think f- f- where i live i live in right now the only type of racism i i saw is systematic racism mm. the systematic racism that that old foreigners face you know to get a job mm. if, if you're applying with the if there is a position open of course even if you are highly qualified, they'll take someone from this country before they take you. Mm. Even if you are three times better than them, you know they prefer taking them over you. When when you get at work, the people who are doing the 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 most and paying less, mm. paid less, those are for foreigners. Yeah, and uh, sometimes I see people complaining. They say they're racist, but I'm like. Uh, I really never, never, never seen. Re- I, I know racism exists, mm-hmm. but I feel like since I uh, I went to Algeria, like I, I, that that was real, real racism. Mm-hmm. You know, people insult you here. No one can insult you. No one can touch you. I, mean, I remember I had uh, uh, friends who were girls. Every time you go to the bus, men would harass them. They touch them. Mm-hmm. They touch their eyes, touch, touch their boobs in public, and no one, no one will do anything. Mm. You know, so so when you go through something like that, and you come to Europe, yeah, where there's a lot of the diversity, mm. even if there's racism, I I, I I I really don't see it. I just, I just only see systematic racism, which is the system. Other than that, yeah, I feel like yeah, this is a pretty decent. I don't know why people are crying about racism. Mm. I think I think that obviously the systematic racism in European countries or like Western world countries is it's just that uh, mm. the good like working places or the benefits are reaped only by the native of that country, the, the natives yeah. of that country. But uh, for you as a foreigner, you're welcome there. You can work, you can do your things, but that's it. Like the country is not going to offer you anything or the you're not going to have much more possibilities to develop your career or develop something else the yeah doctors take you less seriously and stuff like that i guess <laughs> yeah yeah the, yeah the, 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 that's true <laughs> that's the systematic the, racism yeah but in algeria i think i think that you as a foreigner what have you noticed is that it can be violent it can be uh it can, it can be depressing. I think that's that's like yeah, an easy it w- word. It was depressing. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it was depressing. Yeah. And it pisses me off when you uh, compare like foreigners coming from other Arab countries or coming from Libya or you know coming from countries that are not considered black, and they get like such a different treatment than yeah people who are from the same continent for example there is uh there there was a lot of palestinian students and obviously 
I stand with the Palestinian cause, and it is something I continue yeah, to well, advocate. Well, 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 well. We all stand with the Palestinian cause. But yeah. what I didn't appreciate is how much just unconditional support they got to the point where they stopped being nice people or like good people. And they became uh, more used to uh, just give me things. And if you don't give me things, you are a, you are the bad person. And like, how dare you not support me because I'm from Palestine and whatnot. And when you compare that to, for example, you, who I know, my friend, I'd like to say that you're a good person, and your whole presence in Algeria was just to study, and you were, I, I never saw you hurt or bother anyone, but at the same time, you get this uh, treatment just because you have a black skin, and I feel that this issue should shouldn't be just discussed or educated, but also talked about in political uh, in the politi- in the political environment. I feel like the parliament, the president, the whoever is making legislation in Algeria should make clear rules, and universities should make clear code of conduct on how to act on these topics. So, whatever you have lived shouldn't go shouldn't be the reality of other foreign students who are coming yeah it's uh, i think uh yeah they they they, they need this problem educate they need to educate that especially for for the young generation mm. yeah because uh, I, I noticed that some people they they be racist without without knowing that they're, they're being racist exactly Exactly. I noticed that yeah. a lot. I remember once I was going to university and I was waiting for the bus to take us and there was some uh foreign student next to us and they called him like, you know, like basically the Algerian N-word and the guy noticed. Yeah. He noticed that they were saying that but they didn't know they they didn't like think that they said a bad thing first of all. And they didn't know yeah. that he understood them. He, they were discussing mm. on how does he know? Like, how does he know? I think if you hear it every day, you kind of know what, yeah, how you, what you, people you, 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 you. Yeah, you, you, you get to know it. Yeah, and they didn't feel like they were saying anything. And I heard them saying that, like, uh, why did he get mad? Why is he, like, angry at us? And I said, like, maybe, like, don't call him out by his skin color. And they were like, okay, so what, what, was, what, what did we do wrong? Like calling one by skin color? Because, you know, the skin color, the skin in Algeria can vary from like basically extreme white to extreme black. And yeah, a lot of people don't see like uh, or don't, don't mind or don't give two thoughts about this topic, but it can be sensitive even for Algerians who are black skin. And... Yeah, as you said, it should be educated because a lot of people are super racist without even knowing that they are doing something bad. Yeah, the, the, that's true. <laughs> the, that's true. And the, the, there is a, this mentality that they feel like every black guy is poor. Actually, no. I, I, when I was there, I, I noticed that they would uh, people say is that every foreign student here who is black is super rich. <laughs> I mean, I'm... No, yeah, they, 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 the reason they say that is because they assumed if, if you come to Algeria, yeah. you know, you're from the family of ministry. Yeah. But yeah, you come from a, th- a very good family, and I was like, okay, that's. I think that if you still, if you like actually mm. had the money or a lot of these foreigners had the money, they would skip Algeria and go to another country. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that that that, that that's obvious. Because there is, you know, I I I, I couldn't really understand. I, I I used to see that there were some some people in my class. You, you could see someone is wearing the same clothes from Monday to Friday mm. for three months. Mm. But then he comes to tell you if you sure need any help, if you need money, if you need something to eat, something to eat, mm. don't hesitate to to tell me. I'm like, okay, but brother, you 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 you, <laughs> you don't look great neither. Yeah, I think I think you need it more <laughs> but than me. But still, you're assuming you're better yeah. than me. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it can also be that um, hospitality thing that Algerian Algerians kind of yeah, uh, can... are proud of that we are always hospitable. So if someone wants anything, we will give it to them. But it can also be that they're seeing you as less and they as like charity. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think we've been talking for about like 40 minutes now. And uh, yeah. before we finish all this topic today and whatnot, I don't know if I ever brought you Algerian food, to be honest, or like ever gave you Algerian food. But what do you think? What would you think is your favorite one that you had in Algeria? Yeah, my favorite was uh, shakshuka. Shakshuka? Shakshuka, like the, the um, like uh, paprika yeah. and tomato and... Yeah, they, they they mix with meat and it's oh, it's like it's, a galette. It's actually it's actually shakshuka. Shakshuka. Yeah, okay, with, shakshuka. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that was my favorite. Yeah. Spicy one. It is. That, that was my favorite. favorite. Okay, that's where where did you have it? And is it was it in Jelfa or? Uh, it was in Jelfa and in Batna. Yeah, because it's like a one of the fa- most famous Algerian dishes. And yeah. another question: What was your favorite Algerian beach, like that you had to swim in? Where did you go to? Um, so the Tizuzu, there was a um, beach called uh, uh, Tixirt. Tixirt. It was a little bit far. Yeah. yeah. But then there, there is a place. Uh, I forgot. There is a place I went to before coming, before leaving Algeria. It's uh, what's the name? What's the name? What's the name? Which wilaya? It's was um, it? yeah, I'm forgetting the wilaya. It's nearby by um, Anaba. What's the name? Mm. Santana? Uh, no, I forgot the name. Steph? It's, no, Steph doesn't. No, have... not Steph. No, Steph doesn't have a uh, mm. what's the name? Uh, I'm not sure name. too. I forgot Algerian geography. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the place. Yeah. Well, let's say it was in the east. Yeah, it uh, it it was in the east. Yeah, and I think I think that uh, we've 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 talked through like some good topics. Do you think if you have any advice to any some to anyone who is listening who? wants to better themselves and wants to know how to act with foreigners and Africans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the advice is it will be, you know, just trying to get to, to know the person. Mm. You know, if you ever meet a foreigner, just have an interest, you know, avoid, you know, judging the person first, you know, before you talk to them. Mm. And yeah, get to get, get know them, get, invite them, you know, if, if possible, uh, uh, visit your family. The, 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 that's, that's really something that boosts morale, mm. for, especially for foreign students in Algeria. You know, w- 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 when you get to meet an Algerian who's, who's nice, who's decent, it's like it brings back hope, you know. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I also would say that remember that we are all living in the same continent and we're all Africans and outside this continent there is no difference between any one of us we're all like Africans and we're all less or like gonna be subject to systematic racism Yeah. and if you have the option to be a nice person why do you choose not to be and all these foreigners who come to Algeria obviously they know that they have to live within the societal standards and they most likely before they left their country got told that some things are not acceptable and they're not going to do that and they're not came, coming to Algeria to ruin their religion or the country or the standards of living or whatever. And yeah, just be nice. Yeah. All right, man. I think I think this is going to be the end of the episode. I don't know if I explained to you how my concept of this podcast is. Basically, my alias or my username is Benadam. And it means in Algerian, it means like someone, like no yeah. specific person. It just means like someone. 
and this uh, persona has a coffee shop and it's called Benadam's Coffee Shop and basically this conversation I have with these people are them coming to my coffee shop and we discuss uh, these topics I have different topics in each episode so you have been now in my coffee shop and I hope you enjoyed your yeah. com- your stay and enjoyed our conversation and I hope that whoever is listening has enjoyed it and learned from yeah. it so th- thanks for having me it's a, yeah. it's really a pleasure it's, it's a pleasure yeah. for me it's a pleasure for me كانت هذه هي حلقة اليوم نتمنى عجبتكم وديتوا حاجة إيجابية منهم إذا راك ولا راك تسمعي في الحلقة على اليوتيوب وعجباتك خلي لايك للفيديو دير سبسكرايب وإذا راكم في سبوريفاي خلوا ريفيو تاع خمس نجوم ثلاث نجوم ولا زوج على حساب انطباعكم الفيدباك تاعكم يعاوني ويخليني نحسن ولا نغير حاجة مخرجت ليش مليحة إلى الحلقة القادمة سلام <تصفيق>